Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be talking about the Python library called Marshmallow. So Marshmallow is a library that can help you serialize and deserialize data in Python. And basically what I mean by serialize and deserialize is converting basic data types that are found in any language. So things like variables, uh, lists, arrays, dictionaries, objects, hash tables, whatever you call them, these basic data types and converting them to more complicated objects that you would have in your Python program. And of course, you can go the other direction. So you can start with a complicated object that you have in your Python script or app, and you can convert it to something very simple so you can send it to some other program potentially that's not exactly Python based. So the reason why you would do this is for input and output reasons. So any program is going to take in some simple input so, you know, basic variables or lists or whatever. And then it's up to you to convert those to something that are more useful in your program. So, for example, you can take in some information about a user and then you can instantiate an object that has all of the user information in an object so you can pass that around your program. And then when you want to output some data, you can't simply output an object directly. So you need to convert that back to basic data structure so you can send it outside of your program uh, depending on what you're doing. So this stuff is kind of hard to explain because you, know, you need an example. So let's get into the example now. The first thing that we need to do is install it. So I'll use pip install marshmallow and I'll just wait for it to install. It should be pretty quick. All right, so now it's installed and I'll create a simple script to write the example. So script.py. And like I said, it's used for basically converting simple data types to more complicated objects in your program and vice versa. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a class that is going to be used to create objects and then we're going to use Marshmallow to convert to and from that class. So the class will be a person class, so class person. And in this person class, what I want to do is have a dunder init that's going to take in a couple of things. So it's going to take in a name and an age. And I'll just assign the name to be name on the object. So self.name and self.age will be name and age respectively. And I'll create a representation for this so I can easily see it on the console. So uh, dunder representation, so R-E-P-R, -E going to take in self and I'll return an F string that is basically going to say that this person is so many years old. So uh, self, dot name is uh, self dot age years old. Okay, so a pretty simple example to get started. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and get the input data from the user. So I'll create a dictionary called uh, input data. And input data will take in two things, obviously. So input data of uh, name, let's start with name. I'll just take an input from the console. I'll say, what is your name? And then the input data for the age will be similar. We'll say, uh, what is your age? Just like that. And then what I want to do is I want to instantiate a person based off that. So person, and I'll pass a name equals input data uh, name. And then the age will be equal to input data age. So let's print out the person and let's see if it works. So we'll run the scripts. My name is Anthony. I'm 30. And we see that Anthony is 30 years old. So we created the person object and it displays uh, the name is the age years old. So everything works so far. And so far, this isn't a very interesting example because it's doing something very basic. But if you think of person as a more complicated class, so imagine you were using something like SQL Alchemy and this was a database class, then you can take in the input from the user and you can easily create an object based off that input to create a row in your database because that's how SQL Alchemy works. It basically maps objects to rows in your table and then you can add that information to your database. So with this, I can do something similar if person were that type of class, but it isn't, it's a more simplified example, but the idea is still the same. I'm just taking input data and converting it to an object that comes from a class. 
So now let's think about where Marshmallow comes in. So we can use Marshmallow to deserialize this data for us. So deserialize means you go from the basic data types to the more complicated object. And then serialize means you go from the complicated object to the basic one. And it's really easy to confuse. But what I need to do first is I need to create a schema. So the schema is going to represent what is in our potential object. So we already have the object defined, but we need a schema for Marshmallow so we can do things like validate the input that's coming in if we choose to do so. So what I'll do is I'll create a schema. So I'll call this person schema and it's going to inherit from schema, but I need to import this from Marshmallow. So I'll go ahead and do that at the top. So from uh, Marshmallow import schema and also I want to import fields because I'll need that in just a moment. So now that I've imported uh, schema and in inherited from it, uh, what I can do is I can create the name and age fields. So the name is going to be a field and I have fields, right? Plural, yes. Yeah. So fields and then it's going to be a string field. So inside of here, I can pass things like uh, validation parameters, but to keep it simple in this video, I'll just pass a straight sh string field. And then for age, I'll do the same, but for age, it's going to be an integer. So an integer field, uh, just like that. So in addition to having that, what I want to do is I want to deserialize anything that gets loaded into the schema. So what I can do is I can use a decorator called post load. So post underscore load. And here I can use a decorator and I just need to create a method here. So I'll call this uh, create person and it's going to take in uh, self, the data that's passed and then any additional arguments. So keyword arguments, just like that. I won't be using them. And what I'll do is I'll simply return a person and I'll just pass in all the data. So I can do it more directly like this here, but since they match directly, um, I'll just pass everything. So to use this, what I need to do is I need to load the data using the schema. So the first thing I need to do is instantiate the schema. So first let me comment uh, this part out. And under here, I'll instantiate the schema. So I'll say schema equals uh, person schema. And then I want to load the input data that I have into that schema and we'll see what I get. So I'll call this results and I'll use schema.load with the input data here. And now instead of printing person, I want to print results. So let's go ahead and run this again. So my name's Anthony, I'm 30, and it says that Anthony is 30 years old again. So I get the same exact result, but this time I don't create the class directly here, or I don't create the object directly here. Instead, it's handled for me automatically in the post load decorator. So I have a couple of lines of code and you may think, okay, well, this is kind of useless, but what if I did this? So I'll run the script again. And this time I'll put, my name is Anthony, but instead of putting a number for my age, we know that it's supposed to be an integer. I'll try putting my name again. And now I get this validation error. So I'll cover validation in more detail in the next video. But for this video, I'll just mention that we see that it fails on age here because it's not a valid integer anymore. Whereas when I was using this approach here, if I would have passed in uh, Anthony directly for the age, then things would have failed elsewhere. So by using Marshmallow, I get this validation for free basically. And there's a lot of other things I can validate on other than just simple fields. So for example, if I wanted to make sure the age was less than, let's say 150, because as far as we know, uh, no one gets to live that old, then I can have that validation. And I can do something similar for uh, ages that are less than zero. Like no one is negative five years old, so I can validate for that, for example. So that is loading the data. Now, what if I wanted to do the reverse, which is dumping? So I wanna convert a very, uh, complicated object in Python and I want to convert it to a very simple data structure. So here I have the result and I'll change this to person because we know this is a person object and I'll print a person. So let's just make sure everything is working again. So Python script, Anthony age. So Anthony is 30 years old. So now what I want to do here 
is I want to convert that to a simple data structure. And to do that, we'll call this result. I have the schema already instantiated. And instead of load, I'll use the opposite, which is dump. So dump will take the object and convert it to the simple data structure. So dump per person, and then I'll print result. So I'll comment out this print statement so we only see one thing. And I'll run the script again. Anthony 30. And this time we get uh, name is Anthony and age is 30. So this is actually the same as the input data dictionary, but it's already gone through a couple of steps. So it goes through the step of being loaded into a person object. So I have this created already, and then I'm converting it back to a very simple data structure here with result. So going this direction, validation isn't really necessary because this only takes place within your program. It's just loading where it's more important. But I know that any input data that goes through this process will end up with good data in the end. So if I try the approach of, you know, having my name as the age, I still get that error because it's going through Marshmallow and I still get this uh, data. So even if you weren't really concerned with uh, converting plain data to a more complicated data, you can still use Marshmallow for validation only. So you would just remove this part and then you can have all of your validation information here in one place and Marshmallow will go ahead and validate that for you. But like I said, in the next video, I'll cover validation more. So this is a pretty simple example, but you can do more complicated things with this. So I have another video on my channel where I show you how to use Marshmallow with uh, Flask SQL Alchemy. I also have a section in one of my courses where I build an API and I use Marshmallow heavily. So I use Marshmallow to basically parse all of the input that the user passes through both the query string and the request body. And then it can handle that inside the API to return exactly what the user wants. So for example, if they want to uh, get only certain fields from the API, if they want to uh, paginate, if they want to uh, order by something, I have all of that being handled by Marshmallow. So if you wanna see that video, I'll put it, a link in the description below for that video. If you wanna check out the course, I'll put a link in the description to the course. If you want the code for this video, I'll put a link in the description for the code as well. So three things you can check out uh, after this video. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.